you like to stand? Would you like to sit? I'm comfortable standing. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Zaidi has given away quite a bit about you. Firstly, 12, 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Is, is that how it happened? That is the time we don't get calls. <laughs> right now, even when we were waiting here for Mr. Bachchan and uh, the Commissioner of Police, I get a call. I thought that it must be from the event group, which must be frantic about <laughs> the event getting late. Apologies for that. And I get a call and somebody says, Sir, that's how it happened. There's a stabbing ho hai. <laughs> <laughs> So it goes like this, that we don't have schedules. We uh, can't uh, program our day. Uh, but 12 to 3 is something where even the criminals give us time. So <laughs> 12 to 3 was something which uh, was a good window. Uh, thanks to my wife, she sleeps a bit early. So <laughs> I could write in that time. That leads me to the next question. When do you sleep? I sleep If you write between 12 and 3 and then go to work early in the morning, okay. Now, the life of a policeman of your stature is busy enough as is. Uh, we heard from Mr. Zaidi, uh, his view on it, but how did quantum siege actually happen? It actually happened uh, over a chat. So, uh, Zaidi Saab has been writing books and I'm a great fan of his. And he's been a dear friend for many years. Uh, he always used to say that uh, when you tell things, it has an aspect of a story. Something, something as simple as that, I said that when I joined service, uh, we first time saw dead bodies. And after seeing dead bodies, we saw that there were doctors sitting there having sandwiches. So he said that, you know, this is the insider stuff which the people want to know. I said, this is disgusting. He says, that is what people would like to read, an insider's perspective. So it's, it's some kind of from the intestines view uh, of, of things, how we face uh, alerts on a daily basis, it, it's a very plausible story of what can happen at any time. Now, we hear it's a very compelling um, story. My husband has read it and couldn't put it down. Without giving away too much, in a nutshell, can you tell us what quantum siege is, is about? There's a theory, of, which is called the chaos theory, which, which you saw in there. It says that uh, very unconnected things may start off something very major. So it, it goes like this, that a beating of a butterfly's wing in Barcelona can cause a tornado in Toronto. So unconnected world events bring a threat home. The threat home threatens the world with destruction. And the final fight is between a human and non-human. This probably is the crux of it. Wow, that's raised everybody's curiosity without giving away too much. But, but tell me this, um, how much is it inspired from, from real life and real events? I've had this question uh, uh, with a lot of friends. I mean, I've got friends who are authors. So recently, Gregory David Roberts was talking to me. And every, everybody has a way of writing things. I, while discussing with him, I, I told him that uh, writing is like a dream state. So sometimes you see that you see a dream which is very relevant to the day, but the dream is very different. So everything gets mashed up. And it gets represented as something very different. So you cannot actually linearly point that uh, this is this person, because that would be the next question as to which yeah, of the very characters. very ambiguous over here, because I was going to say, how many of your characters are inspired from real life characters that you know? Writing about police. Yeah, I'm pinning you down <laughs> over here. Tell me. <laughs> writing about police is a different thing. And uh, if you're writing, uh, if, you're, if you're making characters which are uh, very senior, like commissioner of police and other people, it's a thin edge to walk. So it's better to let the readers guess who is who. Right. How much research went into, into this book? Because I think a lot. Uh, policing comes naturally to us. I've been there almost for two decades. Uh, but there's a sequence where uh, there's an interaction with uh, uh, an artificial intelligence entity. So for research, I actually uh, chatted with an artificial intelligence. There are a lot of sites with their chatbots which are available like this. So I actually chatted, and all those dialogues are from an actual chat. So, yeah. So that could also be the answer to my question, saying how much is reality? That was reality. That was reality. That was reality, OK. Now, uh, what was the process of, of, of writing this book like for you? I mean, we know you did it in record time. You did it in a period of two months, which is absolutely <laughs>
embarks on a new journey tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for uh, arriving late. Uh, you know, like in all films, the police always comes last on the scene. But we, we had the union home minister. I have just seen him off at the airport, and I have come. So my apologies. You know, the, the uh, age-old, typical, traditional uh, portrait impression of a police officer is one who is, uh, you know, rough in his demeanor, acerbic, vitriolic, or, you know, in his tongue. I must compliment uh, Brijesh for breaking that mold. <laughs> and uh, here we have somebody who is uh, an engineer. Uh, He's done his master's in philosophy, uh, in psychology, and public management. So, uh, you know, normal impression is that a police officer is only good at wielding the lati. But here we have somebody now who, uh, in addition to uh, wielding of the lati, is also very deft and adept at holding a pen. My only worry is with the festive season and the elections and others coming up, now Brijesh would be asking time off to go and attend literary festivals. <laughs> so, so, you know, Brijesh, you will have to choose between a few lit fests, not all. <laughs> anyway, congratulations for embarking on this new, uh, you know, journey. Uh, you know, a journey. And I'm quite sure, you know, he's been very smart. He gave me the book just last night. <laughs> so, I, you know, the few pages that I could read on the way from the airport, or from the office to the airport, yes, he's got, uh, uh, you know, it reminds you of a Robert Ludlum or a David Baldacci or a, uh, a Jeffrey Archer. And I'm quite sure uh, that, you know, with the experience that a police officer gains uh, during uh, his or her career, would stand Brijesh in good stead in writing all these pot boilers and these thrillers. So congratulations once again, and God bless you on the new journey. Mr. Maria. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. I feel very privileged to be here this evening at the launch of this book, Quantum Siege, written by another eminent police officer, Rajesh Singhji. I was discussing this with uh, my dear friend, Mr. Pasricha, also a dear friend and has uh, lent a lot of service to the police force. And uh, Mr. Maria, too, was mentioning how every time there's a book launch from the police force, one or the other member of my family is there to launch it. <laughs> and uh, this is indeed uh, something unique, and I feel very proud. Uh, we always uh, want to associate the police force with the law and order uh, and dealing with the situation that deals with law and order in a city or in a state. But how wonderful to uh, see officer life as an officer and to convert that into uh, some kind of a fiction, which is going to be read by many and admired, that is indeed extremely laudable. Once again, many congratulations to you, sir, and uh, to all members of the media and the friends who have come here to welcome him. All my good wishes, and from my family as well. Thank you. <laughs> 